Good morning. Can't hear you. Can you hear me? No. <laughs> they said yes in the back. Okay. Good, good morning. They could. <laughs> All right. Good morning, Facebook. Being all the way over here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so uh, do we have any new visitors here today? No. 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 I don't think so. Okay, yeah, last night was amazing. Uh, last night we had our bluegrass and uh, celebrated pastors 6 0. <laughs> 6 0. That was really amazing. The Holy Spirit was so strong. It was so amazing. If you weren't here, we missed you. And uh, hope you can join us next time. Um, let's see here. Today, that's right. Today's Marilyn's birthday. She's not here today. Um, I know. Um, any other birthdays? I have March. So I guess that's it until next week, right? Karen? Yeah. Hers is the look here, 17th. Or, or the 19th. Yes, yes. Good job. Yeah. All right. So um, looking ahead, today after worship service, we're going to have some fellowship time. The kids are going to make cinnamon rolls again. And then uh, today, or uh, Oh yeah, is he on here? He's not. Okay, so we might not have Sunday school class then. Um, Tuesday, the youth is going to go bowling at Joey Armadillo's. I think it was 5.30. I remember right. Um, <laughs> um, it is. It's 5.30. I'm looking on the Blooms app. Yes, so I had a little conversation with Ashley this morning. She's like, Man, I'd love to get notified of things. And I said, hey, what do you know? If you download the app Blooms, then you'll get notifications sent to your phone. No one has to remind you. It just tells you and do what your phone says, right? you got to put that on my phone. Sure, absolutely. If you need help with that, I'll, I'll help you with that. Sure. Yeah. And then uh, Wednesday, we have our Bible study at 6. Thursday is our M sing along at 6. And then I think that. Oh, yeah. Check, check. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, I got really hands now, remember? I'm not working hard as much. Yes, Pedro. Yeah, we just got a new person walked right in. Hi, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Mark. Mark. Awesome. So right. glad you could make it. So that wasn't the story. You do awesome. have a friend, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. Sometimes you're pulling our leg, right? <laughs> Lots of friends. Okay. Um, also, uh, we're still doing the donations for the walking in Jesus footsteps for Ram. Yes. Um, is that the total of how many shoes we have collected? Praise the Lord. So 96 pairs of shoes. Yeah. Thanks, Dylan. Okay, so I don't see any young ones here. Um, if we do, we do have nursery that is available. And then... <laughs> um, are there any other announcements or no? Am I forgetting anything? No. Um, how about Joyce? I know Miss Sharon had a joy she wanted to share. I want to share with you the miracle that happened in my daughter-in-law's family last November. Her uncle, who was only fifty years old, woke up in the night and couldn't breathe. Consequently, he ended up on life support for 13 days. Kidneys failed, had pneumonia, had stroke. I mean, chances of him living were pretty slim. And everybody was just praying and praying for a miracle. Uh, Tuesday was day 106, and he went back to work. Oh. <laughs> Christ is alive. I don't know what that means. 
things. <laughs> Use your mouth. You found your phone. Oh, you answered first. You found your phone. Oh. Kids can't talk anymore. So oh, we can talk in the youth room, kids. <laughs> okay. They're wanting to change the bowling night to Wednesday. <laughs> Okay, we'll talk about it and talk with your parents. So, um, any other joys or uh, prayer concerns? There you go. Donita. Well, I was, we went shopping, Sharon and I went shopping Tuesday, and on my way home, I was on Redbud at, at 12, and the light was red, and it changed to green, and I started out in a semi, came from me to, Kimmy in front of me. Whoa. So somebody was right with me. Oh boy, yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's something not to forget. Yeah. You know, when God does the work, you know, um, wow, God is good. He's been doing great things here. And, yeah. Wow. Uh, Berta? Yeah, just pray for Marilyn because the reason she's not here, she's better. She's calling the doctor tomorrow because she can't hardly walk for another day. Any other prayer requests? Yes, Barb. Our daughter Casey will be going through her surgery on Thursday, so just pray that they get everything and God will just take care of the whole situation. Yes, absolutely. And he will. We're going to trust that. <coughs> Any other prayer requests? Thank you. Yes, sir. Brian. <laughs> My, I said, Jim, go. They must be paying the band up there. Where at? Is it? Begin goes at. Oh. We're singing up there. Okay. Any other prayer requests? Yes, Sharon. Yeah, I'm going to pray for Al. Al has a been here in a while. Um, I'd like to ask for prayer for my friend Al. Al hasn't been here in a while. Um, just pray. God knows the need and He knows the concern, and um, He'll be back. Pray for that and for Becca. I haven't seen Becca in a while. Well, I saw her last week, but I haven't seen her here. So pray for her that she's able to come back. Uh, well, we miss her. Yes. Then, uh, got another Men's Day for us coming up. Does anybody know what date that is? No. We got Days of Tech coming up. Hey, girls, is that what you're working on? For both uh, aisles, they are both. Yes. Today, one's the date for us? They're both in April. It's in April. Yes. Yes, yeah, so get us those dates. So we can put them in the bulletin and then see if we can find yeah, some kids to right now. Right. 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 Did you get to Sharon so she can put it in the bulletin and yeah. put it up here on the screen? No. Okay. Yes. Um, I have a lady that I'm sponsoring. Um, not Mike. I already forgot your name. Mark.
Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for today, God. Lord, we just praise you. We just thank you for your presence here and the things that you're doing here, God, and what you're doing in our hearts. And Lord God, I just ask that you open our eyes and our hearts, Lord, to receive the message today. Be with Pastor as he gives the message. And Lord, we thank you. We love you. And we just lift these prayer requests to you, Lord, and I trust that you'll answer those according to your will. We just love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
through Jesus. Amen. 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 So all other all other kinds of love and stuff are good, but they're also shall I'll never forget when you read the Bible, you got the Romans and the Jews killing Jesus. They loved each other, but they didn't love each other. Or they didn't love Jesus. And so uh, but when we love each other and we're unified in Christ, it is special and it is different and uh, I think most importantly, it's eternal. And I look forward to spending the rest of not just my years on earth with you guys, but the rest of eternity with you guys and celebrating. How many want to come to my 1,000th birthday party? <laughs> <laughs>
Good morning. Yeah, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good. All right. So I'm going to hand the microphone and you know what to do, right? I'm going to have you say your name, okay? Ava. Good morning. Savannah. All right. So today we're going to talk about fruit. So first of all, do both of you girls like fruit? Yes. All right, so um, go ahead and tell me what's your favorite fruit? Grapes. Grapes, okay. Grapes too. Grapes too? Okay, that's okay. That's okay that you share the answer. All right, so um, some people say that oranges are good for you because of vitamin C. They kind of help you, um, that they help you when you're, um, when you're sick or you have a runny nose, it kind of helps you get through a cold. And my favorite um, fruit are apples. So just to let you know. Um, so our Bible lesson today, we are going to talk about the fruit of the spirit. So, um, and the fruit of the spirit, the purpose of the fruit of the spirit is giving us a guidance of how God wants us to act towards others. Okay? So, do you think Jesus wants us to be mean to one another? No. No? Do you think he wants us to fight with each other? No. No. Do you think he wants us to be jealous of one another? You're right. All of those are no. Um, so, but when we are kind and loving and forgiving, those are um, qualities that really, 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 really pleases God. Really pleases God. So, what I um, what I want to ask you, and I know it's a probably silly question, but. When you see an apple tree, what do you expect to see? Apples. Yeah, apples. So we're going to turn today to um, Galatians 5, verse 22 through 23. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Okay, so these are the qualities He'd love us to show others. And they are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's what he wants us to see. So my question to you, and this kind of goes for everybody, are we always going to be patient with one another? Yes. <laughs> okay. You, okay, Ava says yes. It is, it is good to be patient, but we're not always going to be patient with one another. And we're not always going to be patient with God. When we want something to happen, we want it to happen right now. So sometimes we don't have the best patience. Um, are we always going to be kind and gentle? All right, um, and there are times that we are going to fail, and and honestly, God expects that because He knows we're not perfect. But what He would love when we aren't per when we aren't doing the fruit of the Spirit, He wants us to ask for forgiveness. That will make Him happy girls, because he knows we're not going to do it 100% of the time. None of us are. Grandparents, parents, brothers, sisters, aunt and uncles, no one's gentle and kind all the time. Um, no one is patient all the time. But when we aren't, all we have to do is ask for God's help. That's what I want you to take from this, okay? So, the um, so let's go ahead. We're going to stand up and we're going to say our prayer. Thank you very, very much, both of you, for coming up today.
Здравствуйте. I am a Christian by the merciful love of God, our Father. My soul is saved by the selfless sacrifice of Jesus upon the cross <coughs> and his resurrection. I am going to heaven, the Bible instructs me. The Holy Spirit guides me. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are the fruit of my spiritual transformation. As I dwell in the Lord, and He dwells in me, may all that I say, do, and think be glory to the kingdom of God. I now commit my life as a living sacrifice in never-ending prayer, praise, and service to the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Sitting on this chicken up here is one of my guests last night, and they need a little plugs into a USB, so I 
has a light bulb in its rear end instead of seeing what it does. <laughs> I just had to put it out here because uh, as a reminder of last night and all the, all the love shown to me. So, still in Romans, right? And so, give me one more click, but all the things I sent to Sharon do not apply. So, <laughs> as usual. So, I'm not even sure what's up there, but I know the passage has changed, but I'm going to go to the we're in Romans 12, and I think we'll end up at verse 9. That's right. Yeah. So it'll be 12 9, but we'll do a little bit of review and get the name. So, and that's all the other things are not this. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, I can tell you, this is a wonderful church. And uh, the church is the people, not the building, right? Amen. Because this building ain't so wonderful. It's really old and needs a lot of repairs. <laughs> One of the things we're looking at, the guys spoke to my heart this morning, just in prayer, and the biggest, really the biggest issue money-wise at this church is the roof going down the education wing, which has never been fixed. It's still the original uh, roof. And but he says that there will be enough people here and enough people uh, that will give money that we'll be able to get that fixed soon, within a year or two. And so, and just, I think, well, when our friend was here, John Smith's brother, he said it'd be about $30,000. And so, I think that's a lot of money, but, you know, compared to building a new building, that's not much. And so, <laughs> so keep that in your prayers. And so, uh, but we're, uh, bring that up because this is our home, amen? amen? And this is our family, amen? Amen. So this Romans 12, like I've told you from the beginning, is just a wonderful, important, and powerful passage. And I just continue to pray, and I'm serious that uh, all of you are reading uh, at least this on a regular basis so that you know what's in here, so that it touches your heart. So, uh, you know, the Bible's like anything else. If you want to be a professional ball player, do you play baseball once a year? No. You know, you go out and swing a bat once a year and then say, well, I'm not playing the pros. And, no. And so uh, when you're a Christian and you want to be closer to God, hopefully that is your heart. And uh, you do that through prayer. Uh, but one of the most important ways is through the Bible. How else do you know what God thinks, what God says, what God's heart is, unless you read from the Bible? Because if you don't read the Bible, read all the Bible, and learn the Bible, and know the Bible, then you create your own God. And so that's, it's not truth. Because... Uh, one of the biggest fallacies that uh, anyone sees out there in Christianity is that uh, Jesus says just love each other. And as long as you do that, and as long as you say that Jesus uh, is alive and you believe he's the Son of God, that that's all it takes. But that's not the truth. Yeah, that it, once you give your heart and fill to Christ, that you hunger for him, that it changes your very being. And you become a new person in Christ. And you need to have that evidence. But it is a wonderful and beautiful thing. A lot of people fear that. They don't want to give up the earthly things. They don't want to be something different. Uh, but I tell you, fear not, because it is so much better, so much more peaceful. And I was sharing with them last night uh, that this, you know, it was very exciting here last night. It's like my dream church where everybody's up and clapping. And today I was glad to see everybody up and clapping. Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't say this much up front because I don't want to be condemning. And that's really what the sermon's about today. But uh, for the life of me, I don't know how you can hear that bluegrass music and not want to get up and clap and stuff. And so I look forward to more of that because I know uh, that we're growing that way. And it's just an answer to my prayer. So anyways, we're going to start reading through the Bible. We'll do the review as always. And hopefully these things stay with us for the rest of our lives. So I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God. And so like I've told you every week, uh, it's only by God's mercy that we're going to heaven, right? None of us earn that. None of us is good enough. As Paul writes, we're all filthy rags. We all fall short, period. So without Jesus on the cross, without the sacrifice, the blood, without the resurrection, we're all condemned. Never forget that. Be eternally grateful uh, to God for Jesus and his sacrifice. And so it's by his mercy to present yourselves as a living sacrifice. So uh, right there from the very beginning, why this passage is so important is because it's not just say 
Uh, I believe in Jesus. That's the beginning, you know. And so we all know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And but a lot of people are in there, and that's not, that's the opening of the door. So how many of you want to spend all winter standing outside the door with the door open? And nobody wants to spend all winter like that. You freeze to death, and your heating bill would be a billion dollars by the end of the winter. So you got to go in the house. And now with this passage, we're in the house, and it requires change. And that is more a true evolution, a true change, and uh, it's a journey. You know, it's what John Wesley called the sanctifying grace and Christian perfection, that uh, all of us should have a story. You know, I really started living for the Lord when I was 30, and hopefully continue to get better. And a big part of that is how much you guys love me. It allows me to heal. It allows me to grow in the Lord. It allows me to share the gospel and tell everywhere I go to tell people how wonderful the people at this church are and how much they love each other. Our new members, when I talk to them, uh, it's a real honor to me uh, to be the pastor here because the new people, when they come, they say, you know, we felt loved and accepted uh, from the very first time we were here. And hopefully that never ends. And I mean, more than a hope, it better not. <laughs> So that's what we want. That's what Jesus wants. And so present your bodies as living sacrifice. Your life is no longer your own. Your body is no longer your own. Holy, set apart, and acceptable to God. So your words, your thoughts, how you spend your money, where you go, what you do, is all of those things acceptable to God. If Jesus is sitting next to you, what would you say and do the things you say and do? And hopefully the answer is yes. And that is your spiritual worship. And so uh, hopefully you guys, I've said it every week, and it really is that important. John 4, 24 says what? That God is truth and spirit. And you must, 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 must worship God in spirit and truth. So it's not just saying, I believe in God. I want to, you know, uh, it's an honor once again to be with Bertha. Uh, we all see it. I don't know how much you share, but... Uh, she, she's growing in the spirit and it just uh, comes from her. You see it and it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And there's many more examples in our church of people that are growing in the Holy Spirit. And man, it is just awesome to see. And also know that's very special. A whole bunch of churches that does not, I mean a whole bunch of churches, that's not going on. And so that spirit is here and it's, we have to worship God in that spirit, not just with words. So do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, and what is acceptable, and what is perfect. And so, uh, Meister Eckhart, how many of you guys know the Christian mystic Meister Eckhart? Yeah, nobody. I didn't. Until I was seminary. But uh, he has a theology of detachment, and that is to, in order to be closer to God, uh, which hopefully is your heart, you have to let go of this earth, and not just in a small way, but in a big way. And so if you make a list, truly make a list of what's most important in your life and act it out. Be honest with yourself. Nobody else can do this for you. Uh, where is God on that list? Is God more important than your house, your car, your kids, all of those things? You have to let those things go to be closer to God. And uh, the example is Jesus as always. What did Jesus own? Nothing. Nothing. What was his heart? To help others, to save souls. And so for us individually and us as a church, uh, that is our focus, that is our goal. Uh, when the shoes are a great example of people caring, right? What do we gain from giving these shoes away? Nothing. So you, as a church, you have to have these ministries because they're not about a church. They're not about making money for us. They're not about fixing the road. They're not about us at all. And so the soupy Sunday, the, the foodie Sundays, the meaty Sundays, the shoes, the few other things we do during the year are really, really important because they show us that we're not self-focused. You know, in any room you're in, who should come last? Me. Yeah, you. And you know, like I say, it's interesting when we have the potlucks and stuff. I just love it when nobody wants to go first because they want everybody else to go first is what I'm assuming. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a good heart when the whole congregation wants everybody else to go first and nobody will go. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. I don't know if you've thought about that. 
But that's what God wants. And then, for by grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. And so, uh, that was a sermon about being humble. If you come first, and we'll get a little bit to this, uh, but you have to be humble to be a servant of God. Amen. And so when you show up and you're loud and proud, and I think, just uh, think about how you talk. I, I, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I say, I think, you should. Read these two, you should, you should. And if you're one of those people, how humble are you? You know, because your thought really should be, how can I serve you? How can I help you? How can I make this church better? You know, we talked about last week, not very much, but... Uh, in a church, when you come to church, you come to church, I, I think this and I want that and I know it should be this and I know it should be that, or do you show up to church and how can I serve? How can I serve God? How can I serve Rick? How can I serve Bradley? How can I make this church better for all of us? And they're two very different thought processes. Most, I'll tell you right now, most people in most churches go for what they get, not for how they can serve. And once again, uh, this church is very different than the church I came to uh, almost five years ago now. And that the heart is very different. And most of you, if not all of you, as I look through the pews, that is your heart. And it is wonderful and it is beautiful. And above all, and most importantly, it is pleasing to God. Amen. Amen. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are in one body in Christ and individual members of one another. And so, you know, look at your neighbor right now if you had one uh, or somebody around you. Uh, we're all one, right? You can just think of us, the way to picture this is we're all underneath this church and we're all holding it up. And if we lose one, that means somebody else has to work harder, right? And so there's no, my main point last week is that we are all important. That God loves us all, God created us all, God brought us all to Portage Prairie. And it's not by accident, it is for a reason. Some of us are new Christians and just growing, some of us are old-timer Christians, uh, but still growing. And we are all needed and all necessary. And a uh, main thing for the older folks is, because I hear it often, I can't do as much as I used to, and, all that thing, but uh, like I told you, and it's very important, uh, these younger people that work all day and have kids and go home, they don't have time to pray so much. And so that's where it balances out. They do more, uh, but you guys have more time to pray, and that's very, very important. So don't think of that as uh, less important or less necessary. Because this is a family, this is a team, and I know with all my heart that God has brought us together for his glory to grow his kingdom period so having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our faith of service and our serving the one who teaches and is teaching the one who absorbs and his exhortation the one who contributes in generosity the one who leads with zeal the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness so i'm going to just point out two words here because words are important, especially in the Bible, uh, with zeal. So if I ask you to do something, like we, knew, we just talked to somebody this morning about, and it was a big conversation last year, and it never happened, so I know it will this year. But uh, you know the ramp out front obviously needs to be painted, right? At this point, it's pretty much a nice sir. And yes, we're going to change the color. Tanya just, she's not here, so I'll tell her. But she thinks black's a good color, and so, but... You know, what y'all think, we'll figure, figure it out. Uh, but with zeal, with joy. So if you show up and say, yeah, I'll paint the stairs. <laughs> I'll tell you honestly, I don't want you to do it. Because you're going to complain the whole time you're doing it. You're going to complain, oh, I got sunburned. It took me four days. Uh, it cost me a hundred dollars and I don't even know if the church can nobody wants that. That's not zeal. Just tell me no. 
Be honest. I got no problem with that because God's going to bring somebody here that's going to smile while they do it. Be proud of their work. And it'll be done well because they want to do it. And so uh, that zeal, that joy, you're working for God. You're doing God's work. You know, the whole Jesus Fest and the, the things we do downtown, they're not for my glory. You know, a lot of the people here last night are because we volunteered down there uh, with Katie at the table. Uh, but I don't go there, you know, and in fact, it's uncomfortable for me. If you're ever down there, if you're, I'm just telling myself a little bit, since this weekend was a lot about me. Uh, but if you notice, I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. It's because uh, just to have that space and to have so much affection and attention directed right at me, uh, in all honesty, makes me a little uncomfortable. And I'm not telling you don't talk to me. I'm not telling you leave me alone, but... Uh, you know, I'm not here, and I don't go down there, and I don't go out in ministry for my glory so that I feel popular, so that I can affirm somebody likes me. Uh, I seriously, wherever I go, wherever I'm doing, the schools, downtown, uh, Jesus Fest, all those things are to glorify God and to save souls, period. Wow. And so uh, that's when I'm excited. That's when you see me talk more and uh, to help hurting people, lost people. And bring them to the Lord to help them to heal, to save their souls. And, and but I have a zeal for that. And then the other, uh, where were we then? We, oh yeah, up here. So and then so that zeal we had that zeal, and that uh, sentence ends with we have a semicolon. Then the one who does the acts of mercy. So this is really really important. I didn't talk about it last week, and we're moving forward. So I'm going to touch on this just a little bit before we get to the next part. But this is hugely important. So after your semicolon, uh, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So acts of mercy are what? Forgiveness, to help, to all those things that typically in the, in the earthly world, in the earthly realm, we don't want to do. You know, as I tell you all the time, think about the person that's hurt you the most. This dirty dog to the most, can you forgive them? And when you forgive them, once again, is it, yeah, I forgive them. Because <laughs> you know you have to. But uh, then, you know in your heart you didn't really. And you know in your heart you don't really want to. And if you're a, a hockey player from a fist fighting family like I am, you want to punch them. You know? <laughs> and I'm not joking. And some of you worse, want to, you know, other people want to do worse and do worse. Uh, but this is important, a Christ-like heart that Paul writes about, to do these works with zeal, to be merciful, to forgive with cheerfulness. And man, that's a, that's a tough order. That's not a small thing. But if you want to ask yourself, am I a Christian? Am I living right? Do I get it? Can you do that? That's a serious test. And so that moves us forward. So... Love, let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, and hold fast to what is good. And so, depending on what Bible you have, the translation there can be very different. So in this Bible says, let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. And so we're going to stop there at 9. And so I'm not sure what that NRSV Bible in the pews says, uh, but... The Bible I have at home with the NASB, which is the most literal translation, it says this, and I think it is a better translation because it's not so mushy and gushy. And this is what the sermon's about today. That the real literal translation of that phrase is this. It says, love must be free of hypocrisy. So you're going to say, I love you, and but well, it's conditional. Like, I stole Roy's coffee mug a few weeks ago. <laughs> and he's going to say, well, I loved you anyways. But he's still mad because I haven't given it back. So <laughs> does, he really, does he really love me? And no. And so this word hypocrisy is really, really important. And that's what this sermon is going to be about today because uh, it's one of the things that is killing the church and has for a very long time. 
Do not be hypocritical, right? Jesus says that over and over and over again. So Jesus says some of Jesus' main themes, we all love, 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 right? But love's a big umbrella. And the components, the handle, the stem, and the prong that go out to hold up the umbrella of love include very many things, which are that mercy. But one of them is don't be hypocritical. And so, you know, we're going to get to a little bit later about the Pharisees and Sadducees. Uh, but you tell people we're supposed to love each other, amen? But do you truly love each other? We say we're supposed to forgive each other, but do you really forgive people? And I've told my story here many times how God convicted me and changed me. And my life is so much more free. Always understand when you don't forgive, you hold that hatred in you. It doesn't bother the other person at all. And also understand that Satan will use that to take you down the tubes over and over and over again. And so until you can let it go, until you can truly forgive the people that have really hurt you, you will not be happy. There will always be that part of you that lives in sadness and hurt and vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, right? And so back when I used to cook and stuff, you know, I could... Back when I was young and in shape and stuff, but I would tell people to their face if they thought about doing something to me, I would say, Vengeance is mine, say it for Scott. <laughs> and, yeah, I would. <laughs> it was not a threat and it was not a joke. The, the hypocrisy of life, the things we do, the things we say, when we say we love people, when we say we're Christians, it cannot be hypocritical, it cannot be fake, it cannot be false. Jesus hates fake. And so if you go to Matthew 7, I guess I need this again. <laughs> so go to Matthew 7 because this is about the log in your eye. If you guys are very familiar with it, we'll read it. How many of you have ever had a log in your eye? <laughs> yeah, but you know if you have a splinter, that's bad enough, right? That can hurt. So we're going to Matthew 7, right at the beginning. There it is. This Bible has huge letters, but the numbers, when they're in the center, get kind of hidden. So judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with that measure you will, it will be used to measure you. So up in heaven on judgment day. So how hypocritical are you? Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And so, first thing I want to talk about in this passage, because it's really important, and I've talked about it uh, before, but... This is hugely important. People read this and they say, don't judge, don't judge. I tell you, when I go to the Methodist shindigs, which I don't go very often anymore, and, uh, but they'll say, don't judge, don't judge. So you have pastors saying, don't judge. Uh, that is a lie. Is there sin? If I come in your house and I rape your wife and kids and shoot your dog and steal everything you own, don't judge me. That's okay. And I had this conversation in, in the schools with the kids. Because uh, they say, don't judge, don't judge. But I tell you what, I do not hear it anymore. Because <laughs> I've talked to them. I do it in a nice way. I say, think about this. And I tell them what I just told you. Is there sin? Does God say there's sin? Do we know there's sin? And there is. So this is not, Jesus is not saying, don't judge anybody for anything ever. Because there is right. There is wrong. God hates sin, and that is not the wrong word. God hates sin. And so you have to define through the Bible what is sin, not in your own mind, you know. If you're watching those morning talk shows and the ladies like The View, if you're watching them, you do not have a good perspective on what is sin because, you know, killing your babies and sleeping around is awesome, you know, and don't tell me I can't. And, but, all those things are sin. And so there is sin. There is right and wrong. There is judgment. What Jesus is saying here is, get your house in order before you start pointing your finger at anybody else. Are you living right? You know, we have the pews 
uh, all have mirrors. When you look in that mirror, what do you see? Do you see a Christian that's really trying to uh, live and right? You all know what your sins are. You all know what your soft spots are. You know where you fall short. Are you working on that? Are you working to overcome that? You know? And so be honest with yourself. Do that own self be true. And so, first and foremost, there is right and wrong, there is sin. Uh, when Jesus says don't judge almost 100%, he's saying don't be hypocritical. And so, you be living right, and when we tell, you know, uh, somebody that they're doing something that's wrong, do we beat them up, do we yell at them, do we make them feel bad? We say, no, that's not what we do. We go to that person and say, I know you love the Lord, uh, but, you know, as a friend, I just want to tell you, uh, it's very obvious that you're falling short here, and I want to help you with this. And that's much better, and you're much more likely to be successful, and that's what a true friend does. And we help each other to be stronger, right? We don't condemn, we don't beat up, we don't make them feel bad. We try to help them in love. And so that's what this passage is saying. And so we all have our laws, but before we say anything to anyone else, before we become hypocritical, we get our life in order. And so that's what this is saying. So, you know, how many of you know somebody, and I've talked about it before, you know some uh, people, uh, when they're out in public, they never cuss, they never say anything bad, do anything bad, but when they get home, they cuss all the time. And then, uh, you know, you got people that are really, really nice outside the house, when they get home, they're mean to their family. They, uh, are mean to their kids. Uh, the words that come out of their mouth, the things that they do, are not kind, are not loving. They would never say and do those things to a perfect stranger, and yet the ones that they love, they don't treat well at all. They say they love them, and yet they treat them very poorly. And so we can't be that person, because that's a completely hypocritical. The people that are closest to you are the ones you should treat the best. Amen? Amen. And that's brothers and sisters here at the crib. And so all these things are bound up in the famous saying that uh, for those of you who know Bluegrass, it was a rule on J.D. Crow's bus. And, you know, I've heard J.D. Crow say it himself over there. And, uh, but if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it. Right. You know? So, and uh, being demeaning, putting somebody down doesn't make you any better than any, anyone. It just reveals to the rest of the world uh, that you have issues. And so, uh, we have a famous saying from psychology that hurt people hurt people. So if you're hurt and you're not healing, if you're not coming to the Lord, if you're not seeking help, if you're not in prayer about becoming stronger, you will continue to hurt people. You will continue to be hypocritical. Uh, you will continue to drag people down. Uh, like I say again, it's just important, it comes up all the time. I say it literally every day, wherever I am, what do you bring to the room? Do people smile when you come into the room or do they frown? When you, are the people glad when you come in the room or are they glad when you leave? Do you bring joy, do you bring Jesus into the room? Or do things get quiet? Are you a complainer or are you a builder? You know? Seeing that something isn't quite right is a good thing, but to only complain about it and not do anything to help build it up or correct it is not a good thing. And so what kind of person are you? And so uh, if you're the, the wrong side of that track, you're just hypocritical. You're negative. And you're, you destroy any relationship in any group you're with. And so none of us wants to be there. And I'm glad to say at this church, for the most part, we don't have much of that at all. So now we're going to go to Matthew 23. And this is a whole chapter. We're just going to read a little part of it. We're going to go to Matthew 23, 23, which will make it easy. This is Jesus in his famous uh, commentary on the Pharisees and Sadducees. So for those of you in leadership, be it at home, for those of you in leadership, especially here at church, uh, you need to read this chapter. Make sure it's not talking about you. And so uh, 
Matthew 23, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others, you blind guides, straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but the inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisees, first you clean the inside of the cup and the plate, and then the outside may be clean also. And woe to you, scribes and you Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you are like the whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones, and all, so that all is very important, so in all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. And it continues. And so in leadership, I can stand up here and I can tell you what to do and where you should be and how you should live. Uh, but if I leave here and go to the bar and then go to my girlfriend's house and leave her house and then go to my other girlfriend's house, I'm not living the life, right? And so when I stand up here and preach to you, uh, that's just being a hypocrite. And so this is especially to those in leadership. Uh, but you have to be living right. Amen. And all these things I talk about week after week after week after week after week, uh, which one is the most important? And the answer is all of them, right? None is less important. And so we have to be merciful. We have to not be hypocritical. We have to be loving. We have to do all these things that Christ calls us to be. And so we get back to, it's not just say, I believe in Jesus. It is that change of heart. And then the, the good news is, once you accept Christ, once you really live in the Spirit, and there's just it's such a beautiful church because there's so many people that can testify to this truth, that once Christ and the Holy Spirit enters your heart, these things that seem like a long list and seem like God wants to control you, uh, but they're actually very easy to do. And the beauty of it is it makes your life so much easier better so much easier is it easier to love or hate and it really is easier to love than to hold a grudge to be hateful to a dozen people and have to keep track of why you hate them and when you hated them and hope that they never see them again and that makes for a rough life and so we have all these things that god is calling us to do but god empowers us right and so this passage, once again, is teaching us the truth. But what we have to be aware of, what I want you all to think about, pray about this week, is uh, you have this outside. How many of you are nice? Raise your hand. So some of you are, most of you are not. That's all right. But is that the truth on the inside? How many of you are full of love? You know, you raise your hand, but is it the truth? So have you forgiven? Are you living just in that love? Are you living just in that spirit? And so there's a lot going on here. And once again, back to Meister Eckhart and the detachment. Uh, when you let go of this earth, when you let go of hate, when you let go of anything that Satan can grab a hold of you with, your life becomes so much more godly, so much more pleasant, so much easier. Um, you know, like I said, I used to, I didn't lie a lot, but a fair amount. Mm. But it's hard to keep track of lies, right? When you're talking to 10 people and you've told them all different things about different things and they're not all 100% the truth and they come back and have a question about the lie you told them, you're like, hmm, I wonder what I said. <laughs> and you got to remember that lie and then you see somebody else you told a lie to. Uh, but if you just speak the truth, it's so much easier because it's the truth and you don't have to remember anything. You don't have to make anything up. And uh, I can just tell you from experience, it makes life so much easier and more pleasant. And most of us want to love each other. Another rhetorical question, how, much, how many of you want to love everyone at this church? And I know you all would raise your hand. And so it makes life so much easier. And so 
We don't want to just have that beautiful outside, right? We want to have the beautiful inside. And just a last little comment before the conclusion. Uh, one of the depressing things about society today is the government and television. And I mean, if I had one prayer, it would be that televisions wouldn't exist anymore. Because they're the decline of our civilization. Uh, but uh, between the media, the politicians, all those things, they want us to judge each other by the outside. They want us to, once again, they've taken everything that was gained since the 60s about don't judge each other by your color, and they've switched that around to all that matters is the color of your skin. And so I pray that all of us as a church, you know, last night we had many people of color here, and that's awesome. And just for those of you that haven't been here long ago, this church had nobody here of any color except white, ever. And so that shows you once again that God is moving here because uh, to me, that don't matter a bit. I don't care what you wear. I don't care. I don't even care if you brush your teeth. <laughs> there we are. That's my joke. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't care. Come here and love the Lord and love each other. And what you wear, I don't care. And uh, the color of your skin doesn't make any difference at all. And until this world gets to uh, being hypocritical, stop being hypocritical about skin color. But it's the heart of a man. It's his love for God. It's how he takes care of his family Amen. that makes a good person. It's how a mother takes care of her family and her kids. That's what makes a good person. None of that has anything to do with anybody's skin color ever. Period. And so all these things, once again, guide us to being good Christians, firstly. And then because we're all seeking God with all our heart, soul, and light, that we become a good church. And not just a good church, but a powerful church. And with a powerful church full of good, godly people that want to serve Him, we can change our community, we can change the world. And so once again, I call on all of you, as you go out this week, to think about these things, to read this passage, not just once, but hopefully daily. And let God touch your heart to be a light in the world. To make sure that there is no hypocrisy anywhere in your life. And just uh, let God change your heart. Let God convict you. So that we may live in continued peace at this beautiful church. And live in continued peace with each other. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these words. That they are powerful. That they are strong. And we thank you for that spirit of peace that is here right now. We know that you speak to each of us differently, uh, but we also know that there are hearts being touched right now. And uh, as we go out into this world, out into our communities, just continue to give us strength, give us wisdom, give us peace uh, to uh, change this world, to bring it back to you. We pray these things by the blood of Christ. And all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. Amen. Watch it, buddy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs>
once again. <laughs> awesome Saturday morning. So we got a couple things, last things to do uh, before we sing a song that I just remembered. So I'm supposed to get a Bible too, but they're not back yet. So tonight. And then after church, we're going to pray over Mary. So uh, as I tell you, it's just the truth. So, uh, But if you don't believe that she can be healed, don't come up and pray. Just be there. You know, come up with a strong heart. Don't be afraid to add words. But pray. And it's not, always remember, it's not us. It's not our words. It's the Holy Spirit. We're inviting the Holy Spirit uh, to heal Mary, to be with her. And so uh, we'll have our closing prayer. And then we'll sing our song. And we'll go out and have some of those yummy cinnamon rolls. Uh, just take one. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a blessed morning. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath morning. The Sabbath was made for us to be here, to glorify you, to worship you, to hear your words, to grow in you, that Christ may grow in us. And that is the plan. And we just thank you for all these wonderful Christians that you have gathered here, that this church continues to grow in every way, in spiritual, earthly, and power and strength it's all through you and we just pray that you continue to empower these hearts to grow us as a church help us to take us to people that need our help that need our love and invite them to church and we just are, are so thankful and i don't know what else to say it's all you're so wonderful and so we say all these things in the name of Jesus Christ who gave his all so that we may live in peace and love eternally with you. And all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. Amen.